Nichiren's words resonate with a deep understanding of the human condition, for he recognizes that we are not merely individuals, but interconnected beings whose fates are intertwined. When any one of you comes, I feel as though all three of you were with me, he declares, underscoring the profound sense of unity that can arise when those of unwavering faith come together. Yet, it is not merely in our devotion that we find kinship, but in the very persecutions we face as votaries of the Lotus Sutra. For as Nichiren so eloquently states, if one's heavy karma from the past is not expiated within this lifetime, he must undergo the sufferings of hell in the future, but if he experiences extreme hardship in this life, the sufferings of hell will vanish instantly. This profound teaching from the Nirvana Sutra illuminates the transformative power of adversity, for it is through the trials and tribulations we endure that we can transcend the limitations of our past karma. As Nichiren reminds us, Bodhisattva Fukio was not abused and vilified, stoned and beaten with staves without reason. He had probably slandered the true law in the past. The phrase, after expiating his sins, indicates that because Bodhisattva Fukio met persecution, he could eradicate his sins from previous lifetimes. Indeed, the very saints and bodhisattvas we revere were not immune to the challenges of persecution. As Nichiren recounts, the 24 successors were all emissaries from the Buddha, who had predicted their advent. Of these, the 15th, Bodhisattva Kanadeva, was killed by a Brahmin, and the 24th, Aryasena, was beheaded by King Danmira. Buddhamitra and Bodhisattva Nargarjuna also suffered many persecutions. Yet, even in the face of such adversity, these great figures remain steadfast in their commitment to the Dharma, recognizing that there are both good and evil countries in the world, and accordingly there are two ways of propagation, Shoju and Shikubuku. This profound understanding reminds us that the path of the Lotus Sutra is not one of ease, but of unwavering resolve in the face of opposition. Nichiren himself acknowledges that he has long been awaiting the persecutions that have befallen him, for he recognized that the latter day of the law would be a time of great upheaval and challenge. Persecutions occurred even in the former and middle days of the law, even in India, the center of Buddhism. Now is the beginning of the latter day, and this country is far away from India. I therefore expected that persecutions would arise, and I have long been awaiting them. This unwavering conviction is a testament to Nichiren's deep understanding of the Lotus Sutra and the prophecies it contains. As he reminds us, the Hiyu chapter states, they will despise, hate, envy and bear grudges against those who read, recite, transcribe and embrace this sutra. The Hashi chapter reads, since hatred and jealousy abound even during the lifetime of the Buddha, how much worse will it be in the world after his passing? The Kanji chapter reads, they will attack us with swords and staves. We will be banished again and again. The Anrakugyo chapter states, the people will be full of hostility, and it will be extremely difficult to believe. These prophetic passages from the Lotus Sutra serve as a poignant reminder that the path of the votary is not one of ease or comfort, but of unwavering resolve in the face of adversity. Yet, it is precisely this commitment that sets us apart. For as Nichiren observes, aside from the former and middle days of the law, now in the latter day, in all Japan only Nichiren seems to have done so. Indeed, Nichiren's own experience has given him a profound empathy for the trials faced by the saints of old, for he can well imagine how followers, relatives, disciples and believers must have grieved when so many of their saints met persecution in the ancient days of evil kings. This deep understanding of the human toll of persecution only serves to deepen his resolve, for he recognizes that the path he has chosen is one of immense sacrifice and hardship. And yet, despite the challenges that lie ahead, Nichiren remains steadfast in his commitment to the Lotus Sutra and the enlightenment of all beings. As he humbly states, though I may sound presumptuous, my most fervent wish is to enable the whole nation to attain enlightenment. This aspiration, born of a profound compassion and a deep understanding of the Dharma, is a testament to the unwavering spirit that has defined Nichiren's life. In the face of such daunting adversity, it would be easy to succumb to despair or resignation. 
But Nichiren's words remind us that the true path to enlightenment is not one of passivity or compromise, but of unwavering commitment and steadfast resolve. Even a single phrase or passage will assure one's enlightenment, he declares, underscoring the transformative power of the Lotus Sutra. And so, as we walk this path alongside Nichiren, let us embrace the wisdom and courage that have defined his life. Let us heed the lessons of the past, recognizing that the persecutions we face are not mere obstacles to be overcome, but opportunities for spiritual growth and purification. For just as the great bodhisattvas of old were able to transcend the limitations of their past karma through the trials they endured, so too can we, the inheritors of Nichiren's legacy, unlock the boundless potential that lies within. The road ahead may be fraught with challenges, but with the Lotus Sutra as our guide and the unwavering spirit of Nichiren as our inspiration, we can navigate these treacherous waters and emerge transformed. For as Nichiren's words remind us, since hatred and jealousy abound even during the lifetime of the Buddha, how much worse will it be in the world after his passing? It is precisely in the face of such adversity that our faith and resolve will be tested and strengthened. And so, let us embrace the path of persecution with the same unwavering commitment that has defined Nichiren's life. Let us stand tall in the face of opposition, secure in the knowledge that the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are ever-present, guiding and protecting us on our journey. For in the end, it is not the absence of hardship that defines the path to enlightenment, but the steadfast determination to walk it, no matter the cost. As we continue to walk the path laid out by Nichiren Daishonin, we must grapple with the sobering reality that the road ahead is not one of ease or comfort, but of unwavering resolve in the face of adversity. For as the great teacher has reminded us, persecutions occurred even in the former and middle days of the law, even in India, the center of Buddhism. Now is the beginning of the latter day, and this country is far away from India. I therefore expected that persecutions would arise, and I have long been awaiting them. This profound understanding of the trials that lie ahead is rooted in Nichiren's deep study of the Lotus Sutra and the prophetic passages it contains. As he recounts, the Hiyu chapter states, they will despise, hate, envy and bear grudges against those who read, recite, transcribe and embrace this sutra. The Hashi chapter reads, since hatred and jealousy abound even during the lifetime of the Buddha, how much worse will it be in the world after his passing? The Kanji chapter reads, they will attack us with swords and staves. We will be banished again and again. The Anrakugyo chapter states, the people will be full of hostility, and it will be extremely difficult to believe. These sobering words serve as a stark reminder that the path of the votary is not one of comfort or ease, but of unwavering commitment in the face of relentless opposition. And yet, it is precisely this steadfast resolve that sets us apart. For as Nichiren observes, aside from the former and middle days of the law, now in the latter day, in all Japan only Nichiren seems to have done so. This realization is both humbling and empowering, for it underscores the profound responsibility we bear as inheritors of Nichiren's legacy. We are not merely passive observers in the unfolding of history, but active agents in the transformation of our world. And it is through the trials and tribulations we face that we can unlock the boundless potential that lies within. As Nichiren so eloquently states, if one's heavy karma from the past is not expiated within this lifetime, he must undergo the sufferings of hell in the future, but if he experiences extreme hardship in this life, the sufferings of hell will vanish instantly. This profound teaching from the Nirvana Sutra illuminates the transformative power of adversity, for it is through the very challenges we confront that we can transcend the limitations of our past. Indeed, we need look no further than the saints and bodhisattvas who have walked this path before us to see the truth of this principle. Bodhisattva Fukio was not abused and vilified, stoned and beaten with staves without reason, Nichiren reminds us. He had probably slandered the true law in the past. The phrase, after expiating his sins, indicates that because Bodhisattva Fukio met persecution, he could eradicate his sins from previous lifetimes. This same pattern can be seen in the lives of the 24 successors, many of whom suffered many persecutions. Yet, as Nichiren observes, 
There are both good and evil countries in the world, and accordingly there are two ways of propagation, Shoju and Shikubuku. It is this profound understanding that has guided Nichiren's own unwavering commitment to the Lotus Sutra, even in the face of relentless opposition. For Nichiren, the path of the votary is not one of passivity or compromise, but of bold and unyielding action in the service of the Dharma. As he so eloquently states, Kanjo Soku is one of the six stages of practice in the perfect teaching. It means that one does as he speaks and speaks as he does. This unwavering alignment of thought and action is the hallmark of the true votary, for it is only through such steadfast commitment that we can hope to transform the hearts and minds of those around us. And yet, Nichiren recognizes the immense challenge of this task, for, even though they praise it, their actions fail to reflect their words. It is precisely this disconnect between belief and practice that has led to the persistent suffering and upheaval in our world, for, it is very difficult to establish peace in society. But Nichiren remains undaunted, for he knows that the path of the Lotus Sutra is the only true means of transcending the limitations of our current state. As he humbly confesses, though I may sound presumptuous, my most fervent wish is to enable the whole nation to attain enlightenment. This astonishing aspiration, born of a profound compassion and an unwavering commitment to the Dharma, is a testament to the transformative power of Nichiren's vision. For it is not merely his own enlightenment that he seeks, but the liberation of all beings, a mission that transcends the boundaries of self and other.